weak points and warnings and suggestions and uh, a promise of rewards which was uh, given to the uh, church at uh, Pergamos in the previous class. And today uh, we will be focusing uh, our study from uh, Revelation chapter 2, uh, verses 18 through 29. Revelation chapter 2, verses 18 through uh, uh, 29. And uh, uh, today uh, we will be just uh, discussing about uh, uh, all those points which is uh, mentioned in, uh, in uh, Revelation chapter 2, verse 18. Uh, through 29 about the church at Thyatira, the church at Thyatira. Now the headline uh, number is number four. The headline number is number four, the church at Thyatira, the church at Thyatira. Revelation chapter two, verses 18 through 29. Revelation chapter two, verses 18 through 29. So listen, uh, without knowing the historical uh, background of uh, the city of Taithaira, uh, it's not possible to understand the messages given to the church. You know, there are many uh, messages given uh, in this portion, but we have to understand what is the, what is the, I mean, uh, historical background of the city of, uh, I mean, Taithaira. When we know the history, uh, we will understand why God is speaking to them uh, in this way. So let us see about the city where the church was located, where the church was located. Just before that, we will go through that portion that we will read uh, that portion, chapter 2, verses uh, 18 through 29. Uh, maybe one person can read uh, from 18 to uh, uh, 22. Then the next person can read uh, from uh, verses 23 to 29. So who is ready to read from 18 to 22? And to the angel of the church in Tithara write, the words of the son of God, who has eyes like, like a flame of fire and whose feet are like burnished bronze. I know your works, your love and faith and service and patient endurance, and that your latter works exceed the first. But I have this against you, that you tolerate that woman Je Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess and is teaching, seducing, and teaching and is teaching and seducing my servants to practice such sexual immorality and to eat food sacrificed to the idols. I gave her time to repent, but she refuses to repent of her sexual immorality. Behold, I will throw her onto a sick bed, and those who commit adultery with her I will throw into the great tribulation unless they repent of her works. Okay. One more person can read from 23 to 29. Anyone, anyone, unmute yourself and read. And I will kill her children with death and all the churches shall know that I am he who searches the minds and hearts. And I will give to each one of you according to your works. But to you I say, and to the rest in uh, the Tara, that as many as do not have this doctrine, and who have not known the depths of Satan, as they call them, I will put on you no other burden. But hold fast what you have till I come. And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power over the nations." He shall rule them with the rod of iron, as the potter's vessel shall be broken to pieces, as I also have received from my father. And I will give him the morning star. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen. So we have many things to uh, study about uh, the city where the church is located, the city where the church is, I mean, located. So we will be uh, focusing on that point. Uh, uh, where the city is located or where the church is located. You know, there are many specialities which is uh, uh, written there about uh, the city uh, of Taithaira, and we'll be going through that. And uh, you have the screen sharing about uh, the city where the church is located now. 
the city of Taipei is located 40 miles uh, away from Bergamos and 20 miles away from Sardis. The city of Taipei is located 40 miles away from Bergamos and 20 miles away from, I mean, Sardis. And uh, this city was attacked by enemies continuously and re-established many times. You know, many times enemies uh, were attacking this, I mean, uh, city. Uh, it was a continuous process and many times it was attacked by the enemies and, uh, and also it was uh, re-established uh, uh, by the emperors many times. And uh, uh, the, the, the name which is given there is uh, uh, um, Seleucus, Seleucus Nicator. Seleucus Nicator, uh, he was one of the generals of uh, Alexander the Great. So he was the one of the uh, generals of the Alexander the Great, Seleucus Nicator. Uh, he made the city as Greek colony. He made the city as Greek colony. And for the remembrance of his daughter, he named the city as Taitaira. So it was, uh, the name Taitaira was given by this man called Seleucus Nicator uh, on behalf of his daughter for the remembrance of his daughter, he named the city as Taitaira. So that is the a small history about the name, how it was given for that city. Now, in BC 190, in BC 190, this city was captured by Roman emperor and made the city under the Roman region. Uh, this, this happened in uh, BC 190, that this city was captured by Roman emperor and made the city under the Roman uh, region. Later, the city became the center of idol worship and immoral activities and blind faith because of many reasons. You know, uh, in, in, in the beginning, in the initial stage, uh, there was no problem at all in the city, but later what happened, uh, this city became the center of idol worship and uh, of many immoral activities and uh, blind faith were there. And there were many people, those who were following all those blind faith and the idol worship and immoral activities. So uh, there are many reasons for that. There are many uh, reasons for that, I mean, so uh, the reasons are, you know, the city became the business center of dyeing industry and of the trade in woolen goods. Um, the history says that the city became the business center of dyeing industry. It was an industry of dyeing and of the trade in woolen goods. The woolen goods, we know that, and the dyeing or dye, you know that. You know, the, the city was famous for uh, the purple dye. Uh, you may be knowing uh, what is the purple dye in Malayalam, it is Rektambaram, uh, Rektambaram. So we will, we will uh, go to that point later. So this city was famous for the uh, purple dye. Uh, this dye is used to, to give different colors to the clothing. So different colors to the clothing. And it was taken from a shell, which was available in the river called, I mean, Lycos. Okay, so this uh, dye or uh, the purple dye was made out of a shell. That means it comes from the shell, which is available in the river called Lycus. And they used to uh, make this dye or color out of the shell and mix with uh, uh, some of the roots of some other plants. And uh, we have to know that, you know, uh, the, the, the process how uh, they were making this uh, purple dye in that, in that city. You know, this I mean, purple dye was available only in the city of Taitaira. And uh, uh, the process of making that, uh, I mean, purple dye was, I mean, they used to uh, get this color or the, or the dye from the shell uh, uh, from, from, from uh, the river called uh, Lycus. And uh, they used to mix that color or mix that dye with the roots of uh, some other plants. And uh, we have to know one thing that it was so costly. So this purple dye was very, very costly in those days. And the another reason is, another reason is traders were focusing on many things. There were many traders and they were focusing on wool and leather, linen, bronze. These are the, these were the uh, uh, very famous and very costly items in the city. 
So, you know, the traders, usually they were focusing on these kinds of items, these kinds of goods like wool, leather was there and linen were, I mean, linen were there and bronze was there. So these things were very, I mean, focused by the traders. And there were many workers of costly garments, dyers, potters, bakers, and slave dealers. Okay. These are the business center, I mean, uh, business focusing, I mean, areas of that city. You know, there were many workers working uh, uh, on the costly garments were there and dyes, dyes were there and potters were there and bakers were there, slave dealers were there. You know, slave dealers means, you know, uh, in, in the markets itself, uh, uh, you will get the slaves. So we, uh, we they were able to buy the slaves uh, from uh, the market. So that was the system that they were and custom they were having in, in those days. And also the reason, the another reason is there were many uh, trade unions in those days. Even today also we have, uh, um, everywhere we have many trade union, unions are there, you know, different kinds of organizations are there. Uh, uh, with, uh, uh, some of the people will be joining with one union and the other people will be with the, the other union. So the, the same thing was happening in those days also in the city of Taithaira, uh, that is uh, the trade unions, okay? And uh, uh, only the richest people could get the membership in those uh, uh, trade unions. So that was one of the, the important thing that we have to understand when we go through the, the history and also the messages which was given uh, for the uh, church of Taithira. You know, only the richest people, the richest people uh, could get the membership in those trade unions. And the another speciality is um, each union had their own idol worship system and their own custom of worshiping the pagan gods and immoral uh, activities and eating the food which was offered to the idols in their parties and love feast. Okay, so you're getting that slide there. You know, uh, each union had their own idol worship. So one union will be saying that, okay, you have to uh, worship this idol and the, the other uh, union will be saying that you have to worship uh, the, this idol. Okay, and that was the custom of worshiping the uh, pagan gods and also uh, there were the people, I mean, involved in immoral activities. And also the another uh, serious thing is there were uh, people eating the food which was offered to the idols. Where they were doing this? They were doing all these things, maybe in the, in the temple or maybe outside the temple when, when they are gathering together for the parties or the love feast. You know, or the richest people will gather together, especially the business people. The business people will be gathering together and uh, doing all these uh, uh, immoral activities uh, when they are gathering together for the parties and love feast. Okay, but uh, the 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 uh, main thing that we have to understand is the Christian workers uh, uh, always refused to, to take part of all those activities, and the Christian workers were not happy with that, and they were just refusing that they were saying that uh, we cannot come for that party because you are having all these immoral activities in there and we are Christians and we are not able to uh, attend for that party and we'll be refusing that. I mean, we don't want to come there. Then because of that reason, uh, they had to go through many persecutions. So that was that was happening in the city of Taithera uh, regarding the church of Taithera also. You know, because of this reason, uh, they had to go to uh, through many persecutions in, in those days. So uh, the other thing, the people of that city uh, used to worship the emperors along with the other gods and goddesses. So that means the emperor worship was there. You know, they were worshiping the other gods and goddesses. At the same time, uh, they were uh, uh, supposed to, and they were promoted to worship, and they were compelled to worship the emperors also. So along with the the emperors, uh, they were uh, worshiping the other gods and goddesses. And mainly uh, the Greek god, I mean, uh, uh, Apollos, uh, sorry, Apollo, Apollo. Uh, he, I mean, that, uh, that god is known as the sun god, the god of the sun, the god of the sun. So th that is the Greek god. Uh, 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 that god was the main image of worship in those days. Apollo, the sun god, was the main image of uh, 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 the worship in those days. So, so these are the uh, major specialities of the city where the Taitaira church was located. Now, 
we will go to the point number B. Point number B, that is the establishment of Church at Taitaira. The establishment of Church at Taitaira. So uh, regarding the establishment of the Church at Taitera, you know, that means how the Church at Taitera was uh, uh, established or how it was formed. So nothing is uh, mentioned about, uh, specifically about who planted the Church at Taitera, uh, but it is not mentioned uh, anywhere in New Testament whether Paul or John established uh, this church, okay? So now, can you guess who might be the person who initiated in establishing the Taitera Church? Lydia. Lydia. Lydia is the is the person. You know, there is there is a woman mentioned in the, the book uh, uh, book of Acts from this city. Okay, so Lydia. Can you can, uh, her name? Can I that it was it was Lydia? You know, L Y D I A Lydia. So that is in Acts chapter sixteen verse thirteen. Acts chapter 16, verse 13, um, uh, there, is a, there is a woman mentioned in in book of Acts, okay? Acts chapter 16, verse 13. Can you read that portion? Acts and 16, on the 13. Sabbath, and on the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate to the riverside where we were supposed to we, where we supposed there was a place of prayer and we sat down and spoke to the woman who came, who had come together. Thank you, Elsa. So, uh, as I told you earlier, the city was famous for the uh, business of purple dye and uh, other items. You know, uh, this city was always famous for the purple dye and other items and goods, you know, uh, it, uh, as I told you earlier. So, it is believed that Lydia uh, was uh, one of the business women of these items and for that purpose only she came to Philippi. So, we read that portion. 16 verse 13, Act Book of Acts. You know, there it is written that Lydia, with the purpose of uh, uh, purpose of uh, selling uh, these items, you know, that woman, I mean, uh, was uh, coming uh, to the place called Philippi, Philippi, in that portion it is there. So Paul, uh, Timothy, and Silas, they were, I mean, preaching gospel in many places, and then they reached Philippi, and there, they were speaking to the woman assembled there in a in a in a riverside. Okay, so that also is there in the in in that portion. You know, um, so what happened? These people, these uh, I mean, apostles and ministers, they were preaching gospel in many places, and uh, and and that time they reached to Philippi, and there were I mean I mean they were they were trying to speak to the uh, people, especially the woman, uh, those who were gathering in that place assembled in that place uh, by the uh, riverside. Uh, uh, you know, and, and a God-fearing woman named Lydia, Lydia from the city of Taitaira, a seller of purple goods, also was listening their speech. So that is their it, written there. You know, this lady, this woman, Lydia, was a God-fearing woman, and uh, he, she was from the city of Taitaira. Uh, she was a seller of purple goods, and uh, she was listening the speech of Paul, Timothy, and Silas. So what happened? The Lord, it is written there, the Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what was said by Paul. That means when God opened the heart of that woman, she accepted or she received the gospel in, his heart, in her heart and she was accepting Jesus also as, his, as her personal savior, and she was so excited to, uh, to know about uh, Jesus and the gospel because she was a, she was a, uh, uh, she was actually, she, uh, the Lydia was not actually from Jewish background. She was not from the Jewish background, but she was 
believing in Jehovah God. She knows something about Jehovah God and Jesus and everything. And even she was, she was not a Jewish from Jewish background. So she was knowing something about God. Same time, uh, you know, let me tell you one thing. Uh, in those days, if the Jews need to make a synagogue, uh, I mean, uh, there must be there must be few people to gather together. You know, without uh, a few people, they cannot make a synagogue. So in those days, I mean, uh, uh, they were worshiping or they were having the prayer meeting. Jewish people were having the prayer meeting in synagogues. synagogues. So uh, there must be few people uh, to gather together. Then only they can make the uh, synagogue in a place. But uh, I mean, uh, we know that there was no synagogue uh, in that particular place. Uh, so they gathered together in the riverside for prayer. This is very interesting to understand, you know, uh, because of the reason that there is no synagogue, these people were just gathering together in the riverside for prayer meeting. So what happened? This woman also joined with them. This woman, Lydia, also joined with them. And uh, uh, you have to understand uh, the, the, the eagerness of this woman for prayer and fellowship. You know, even though we are, uh, I mean, going through these portions and even though we are, uh, I mean, uh, we are in a Bible study, uh, I would like to, I mean, give you a message about the portions, you know, I, I would like to give the message about the portion and I have the sermon to speak to you this evening also about these portions, you know, we have to, I mean, I mean, very clearly understand I mean, the, the eagerness of that woman, eagerness of that woman, you know, that woman, I mean, also, even though she came, came for the uh, purpose of the selling the purple dye, she is spending time to listen to the word of God. Okay, so what was, this, what was her purpose? She came there to sell the purple items or, or the purple dye or something. Okay, it was a costly item. So even though she came for selling something or business purpose, she was spending time to listen the word of God, listen the word of God. So this evening, let me, let me ask you one thing that do we have that dedication or commitment or decision to spend time for the spiritual growth? Most of the time, what happens? We do not have that, you know? Do we have that dedication and do we have that commitment or uh, do we have the decision to spend time for the spiritual growth? The spiritual growth, that is very important. You know, often the answer is no. The answer is no. You know, many of us do not know how to how to use the opportunity for our spiritual awakening. You know, that lady, that woman, she came to that place for the purpose of business, for selling something. But in between, when she get this time, she was just joining with the people of God. And she was worshiping God and praying and listening to the word of God. But what about, what about us this evening? Many of us, we do not know what is the opportunity. And we are not make use of the opportunities in our life to, uh, to, to get the spiritual awakening and spiritual revival. I mean, so if the answer is no, then think about one thing that this is the best chance that uh, we have these days. You know, we, we call it as a COVID season. COVID season. So we have the best time, best chance that God has, have, God has given us. But I mean, best technologies have given for the people of God. I mean, in this COVID season also, through Zooming, through Zooming, okay? So this is the technology that, that is given by God and we have to use that. We have to use that means, you know, uh, we don't want to, we don't need to I mean, travel to the church these days and or any any other houses for the prayer meeting no need to spend the gas or no need to spend time for dressing up and many things are there okay so if we are going to the church and worshiping there or praying there i mean we have to spend many things but these days in this covid season through zooming we are having the meetings and everything so there is no need to spend anything for that no need to i mean spend time no need to i mean spend gas or uh, uh, no need to I mean, I spend time. So we are, we are very free and we are sitting at home. Okay. And what we can do it, I mean, sitting at home, just click on your phone or device and join the Zoom. That's all. Okay. It's very easy, but I don't know how much we are using all these facilities and technologies to build up our spiritual life. We have to think about that. We have all the opportunities and we have all the 
technologies and we have all the facilities in our life at our home. It's very easy. But I don't know how much we are using the facility. You know, we should focus our, I mean, building up our spiritual life, building up of our spiritual life. I mean, I'm not accusing any, any, any person or blaming any person, uh, but I'm trying to tell you the reality or the truth. So, I mean, can we take a decision now that I will be always available at God's presence, just like that Lydia, the woman Lydia, even though she came for selling the, the, the items or the purple dye or something, she was able to, and she was willing to, I mean, uh, have a prayer meeting and she was willing to spend time with the people of God, those who were speaking the word of God. She was listening that and she was accepting that gospel into his into her heart. I mean, so now uh, you have to think about one thing. It is believed that this Lydia, after receiving the gospel and Jesus, uh, she went back to her home city. It is Taitaira because she was from uh, the city of Taitaira. And after getting this gospel, after getting Jesus, and after uh, listening about the word of God, she went back to her home city, Taitaira, and I mean, shared the gospel there and the church was formed by this woman. So it is, it is a belief. You know, some people believe that Lydia uh, is the person who brought the gospel and the, and the Jesus Christ to the city of Taitaira and she was forming the church at Taitaira. And also the other, I mean, belief is, it is also believed that after Lydia, after Lydia, Paul also visited the, uh, uh, Taitaira and established uh, the church there. So that is the second belief that after Lydia, uh, uh, Paul also visited uh, uh, that place, that, that city, and uh, he is the person, Paul is the uh, person who established uh, the church there. So it is not mentioned in the, in the Bible very clearly, but we know that Paul was visiting all those places. Uh, at the same time, just before that, Lydia listened to the word of God. She came from Taitaira. So there are chances that maybe, uh, I mean, Lydia or Paul have established or formed the church in Taitaira. So that is the end of that point. And we will go to the uh, third point or C, point number C. Point number C, that is the messages to the church at Taitaira. The messages to the church at Taitaira. Uh, messages to the church at Taitera. Um, yeah, the slides are coming there. Uh, the word Taitera means, the word Taitera means continual offering or perpetual sacrifice. You got it? You got that point? The slide? No? Point number C, the messages to the church at Taitera. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Uh, the the messages to the church of Taitera is uh, 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 the point is uh, the word uh, Taitera means continual offering or perpetual sacrifice. Continual offering or the perpetual sacrifice. But later, what happened? It became the corrupted church. So later, it became the corrupted church, and it was known as the corrupted church because there were many corruption because of the entrance of idol worship and other religious and political influences. Okay, so, you know, in, in our time also, this is happening in, in our many churches, you know, uh, uh, many churches of, in, of our days also uh, were uh, very 
eagerly they were gathering together and always they were offering and they were also always sacrificing for the lord and always worshiping god what happens after many years after many years maybe gradually this happens and it becomes just like a corrupted church because of the entrances of many things you know the idol worship entered into the church and the religious influence entered into the church and political influences entered into the church you know where there is idol worship or there is religion comes inside the church where there is politics comes inside the and politics influence the church people there comes the corruption okay so this is what happened to the church at i mean taitaira now we will go to the uh, first a point that is the source of the messages the source of the messages from chapter 2 verse 18 from chapter 2 verse 18 can you read that verse first 18 verse and to the angel of the church in titira in titera right the words of the son of god who has eyes like a flame of fire and whose feet are like burnished bronze amen so from chapter 2 verse 18 uh we understand who is the source of the message who is the source of the message that means from where from where or from whom this messages are coming who is that jesus himself is the source e doodinde uravidam ennu parayunnathu yesu christu aanu jesus himself is the source of the messages to the church at Thyatira and there are many reasons that why Jesus is addressing himself as the son of god and all those things okay so uh, uh, Jesus is addressing himself in three aspects three aspects you know uh, we will we will we will think about that okay so Jesus is addressing himself uh, as a source of this message in three aspects the first one is the son of god the son of god so jesus addressed himself as son of man in all other portions of the book of revelation so you by we have been studying from chapter 1 and chapter 2 and all those portions we learned that jesus is addressing himself as the son of man son of man in all other portions of the book of revelations but this is the only place where he address as son of god he address himself as the son of god you know the reason is the people of thyatira were worshiping the god of sun apollo right i told you already okay earlier i told you that those people the the the, the people of the uh, city of thyatira they were worshiping the god of the sun apollo sun the god of sun apollo okay but here jesus says that i was born as a son of man but now i am the son of god got the point okay so jesus you know he was saying that i was the son of man when i was born into this world okay i was a son of man okay but now i am the son of god that means now i am glorified i am glorified so this is the message that jesus is saying after the resurrection and after the ascension right after the ascension so that's the reason jesus is saying that i was a son of man while i was in this world in my public ministry but now i am standing in front of you as a son of god as a son of god now there are many people uh, i mean uh, worship jesus as a son of man still and they are worshiping Uh, jesus as the son of mary also you know they are thinking that okay jesus is the son of mary this is the son of joseph okay so you have to understand one thing that is over okay that is the earthly ministry of jesus christ but now jesus is the son of god there are many reason that jesus is saying i am the son of man i am the son of man. i mean god also okay so that we will i mean uh, listen maybe afterwards now you know there are uh, uh, but but let me let me uh, tell you one thing you know uh, we have to worship him as knowing that he is the son of god 
we are worshiping god our god jesus is the son of god okay he was the son of man while he was in this earth in his public ministry he did everything for the people of god and for all the people at the same time he is the son of god and we are worshiping by knowing that we are worshiping he is the son of god okay secondly secondly his eyes like a flame of fire his like his eyes are like a flame of fire we already discussed all those things in the previous churches okay so i'm not uh, i mean spending more time for that but this speaks about the sharpness of his sight the sharpness of his sight his eyes are like a flame of fire that means the sharpness of his sight that means nothing is hidden in his sight nothing is hidden in his sight and the third i mean third one is third speciality of the son of god mentioned in this in, in this portion is his feet are like a burnished bronze his feet are like burnished bronze that means his authority over everything in this world his authority over everything in this world okay so now we will go to the point number b point number b the appreciations the appreciations chapter 2 verse 19 chapter 2 verse 19 we will read that verse I know your works, your love and faith and service and patient endurance, and that your latter works exceed first. Good. Okay. So, what are the appreciations there? There are sixfold appreciations for the Thyatira Church. There are sixfold appreciations for the Thyatira Church. Means, I know, I know, I know. What Jesus knows? First one, I know your work. I know. your work or it is written i know your deeds okay the greek word which is used for the work or the deed here is erga 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 is the greek word which is used for your work that means the social or charitable work or social activities social work or social activities or social charitable work whatever maybe you can you can take that that word the greek word erga means so jesus says i know your work i know your work that means i know very well about how you were doing your social work and your charitable work and your social activities now let me tell you one thing some people are so happy to enjoy the social activities right even today also there are many people they are so happy they are always enjoying the fun they are always enjoying the fun and they are so happy to enjoy the social activities and social work for example you know uh, if you call them uh, uh, for a picnic or retreat they are always ready right they are always ready okay so you call them okay so we have a brother family we have a picnic and we have a retreat they will say okay we are ready how much money Six hundred or a thousand hundred dollars or something. No problem. This is not a. It's not a problem at all. Okay, we are ready. No, it's a. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's a just a retreat or picnic, whatever maybe. We are ready. For example, you know, it's it's a musical program. You know, if you call one person for a musical program, they will say we are ready. If it is a youth program, they are ready. You know, all are. I mean, watching eagerly, but during the time of message or fasting prayer, what happens? you know that that situation you know if you are calling for the the social i mean uh, social uh, uh, i mean events or something retreat or something they are so, so ready and uh, you know when they are when the, the children are doing some programs okay for example our youth program okay it is coming so when uh, the the children are doing the youth program uh, these people are very eager to to see that okay, what happens there and what they are doing what the child is doing all those things at the same time during the time of the message or during the time of the fasting prayer what happens you know we know that some used to sleep that time and some used to uh, i mean sit like uh, uh, what is that okay uh, sit like uh, maybe like this or uh, 
practice or something like you no know, people used to sit like that when the messages are going on and when the fasting prayer is going on they are so tired they are so bored okay they are not interested in all these things but the other activities they are always ready and they are active that should not happen god says that i know your work i know your work you are doing the social work and you are you are involved in the social activities and you are doing the charitable work that's very good that's very good okay but the problem is coming afterwards the problem is coming afterwards you know secondly the second i mean uh, uh, thing the second appreciation is uh, i know your love there is no need to explain all those things okay i just i'm i'm moving on you know i know your love i know your love then i know your faith i know your faith next one i know your <clears throat> service i know your service and the next one is i know your patience or perseverance perseverance or patience and the last one sixth one is you are doing more than you did first right you were doing more than you did first it is written that your deeds of late are greater than at first that means now you are doing a very good work and now you are doing very good work that is very interesting you know they were all involved in many social activities and charitable work or social even events and everything they are very much interested in everything at the same time god is appreciating them for all their work for all their love for their faith for their service for their patience and god is saying that you are doing more than you did first i'm so happy about that god says i'm so happy about that you just continue that i mean but but the other 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 point is the weak point point number c what is that point number c the weak points is coming from chapter 2 verse 20 you read that portion 2 20 but i have this against you that you tolerate that woman jezebel who calls herself a prophetess and is teaching and seducing my servants to practice sexual immorality and to eat food sacrificed to idols okay now uh we we have to be very careful about that you know uh till that verse uh verse 19 god was appreciating them god was i mean encouraging them okay i know your deeds and i know you love faith and service and patience and everything you are so good you 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 are doing very well everything is okay but 20th verse says but i have this against you i have this against you that means only one thing that god is mentioning in this passage that is the weak point of the church that is the weak point of the church now let me tell you one thing we also may have many kinds of good things in our life our church also may have many kinds of good things in our church you know we have many things to share we have many things to say okay this is i mean we have many things to boast about our church and we are saying okay this is we are doing these and these and that and everything at the same time when god is looking into the church when god is looking into a believer or says that i have one thing against you i have one thing against you okay everything is okay but no problem one problem is there what is that what is that big point the main big point of that church was they were tolerating or permitting the teachings of jezebel the false prophetess that is what is written there the main and the big point is there only one big point is mentioned in this uh, uh, about this church that is they were tolerating or tolerating means they were permitting the teachings of Jezebel the false prophetess false prophetess you know um, uh, the identity of identity of this woman is not uh, a clear uh, but there are mainly two opinions about this woman now mainly there are two opinions about this woman uh, we cannot say that okay uh, surely uh, that is true or this is true but there are two opinions about this woman uh, which is mentioned in this verse uh, the first opinion is uh, there was a woman in that church named Jezebel and she was a false prophetess 
there is the first uh, uh, there is the first uh, i mean uh, identity or i mean uh, opinion about this woman right? there was a woman in that church named jezebel and she was a false prophetess okay secondly secondly uh, the second opinion is there was a woman who had the spirit of jezebel of the old testament there was a woman who had the spirit of jezebel of old testament but we cannot say that who was the okay uh, the, the 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 clear uh, uh, clearly we cannot say that okay uh, who is this person who is this woman but at the same time uh, next class we will be studying uh, more about uh, i mean this uh, woman called jezebel and uh, what is the uh, what is the uh, spirit of uh, i mean means the spirit of jezebel okay from the old testament so from uh, maybe uh, first kings chapter 16 or something so uh, later okay and maybe next class we will study about jezebel so we have many things to study about uh, this his, the teachings of jezebel but one thing let me uh, i mean just uh, i mean remind you that you know uh, about the thyatira church uh, jesus is mentioning many things you know jesus has many things to share about the the church at thyatira and uh, the establishment uh, of the church and uh, uh, the appreciations are there you know uh, jesus is appreciating them okay there are many many, many messages and and jesus is saying that i am the source of the message okay the message is coming from me i am the son of god i am the son of god and my eyes are like a flame of fire and also my feet are like burnished bronze nothing is hidden in the sight of god and god has jesus has the authority over everything over everything and he is appreciating these people that he knows everything about you and you are doing many things very well but at the same time i have a something or or one point against uh, uh, you that is the weak point that you are tolerating you are permitting something which is absolutely absolutely against the biblical doctrines Okay. this is very important to understand when the, the 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 things and the false teachings and false prophecies are coming inside the church that church becomes the corrupted church that church becomes the corrupted church that is the history of the christian church that is the history of the christian church you know we should not permit or we should not tolerate the the, the teachings of jezebel or we will study about that later but we should not promote any kinds of i mean a uh, uh, false prophecies we should not promote any kinds of i mean false teachings from the bible you know they have many things to teach to the people there will be many people will be coming inside the church and they'll be speaking many things but we should be very careful and seriously think about okay is it the the, the uh, are they following the word of god clearly and are they really the the ministries of god or not so this is our um, responsibility to understand to to make clear that uh, are we continuing are we following the christian doctrines uh, very clearly in the coming days also so i mean this is the so today i would like to i mean close the class uh, uh, by saying this point and uh, uh, later in the in the in the, in the next class we will be i mean uh, i mean uh, thinking about the 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 uh, uh, the coming points and everything so we'll be studying about jezebel and the spirit of jezebel okay